Peace to the gods. Peace to the gods. Use the veil here. Today, I want to talk about something um, that I feel needs to be addressed. Recently, somebody posted a link on my YouTube page and uh, telling me about some information regarding Gene Keating. Someone was saying uh, exposing. You know how they love this word, expose, exposing. <sighs> And then I guess allegedly that all the of the information that I received, I got from Gene Keating. So today I'm going to put that to rest. Y'all not going to have to wonder where I got my information from. I'm going to take you back to the beginning when I first started this. And I'm, I'm going to give you every single thing that I read when I started this. So it won't be any confusion about where I got my information how I obtain my information, uh, why do secure party, uh, are you committing fraud against the people or anything like that. Um, I've already did two uh, videos called Top Ten Documents for you to read that kind of goes over this. But this, le uh, this list right here is the list of documents that I read when I first started out. This is everything I had when I first started out. And uh, I don't know if it's in the exact order that I received everything, but this is how I started out. OK. I started out with a document called Creditors and Their Bonds, which to this very day is still my favorite document. Anybody who listens to me knows I'm always talking about that. The reason that I love Creditors and Their Bonds, because everything that it tells you to do in there, I did. And I saw what happened. Now, there's this notion that. Um, people are pulling up cases off of the internet, uh, showing where people didn't win and things like that, uh, using any of these processes. Anybody who's used these processes know you're not going to find anything in the public record of people winning. In creditors and um, in creditors and their bonds, there was a, a a a paragraph that said everything to me that impacted me so much that I think that I should read to you. Um, and it, it shed some light on this public and private and why these people are pulling up these cases and not finding anybody winning. It's the first thing I ever read. And it said the United States and all its officers, agents, and employees has no commercial capacity to really make claims without evidence of an existing debt. That does not mean the state will not make it look like it is making claims. It needs your credit. So it is going to go through the motions of making claims. Do not embarrass state agents and point out that it has no commercial energy. It is your job to use your commercial capacity to fulfill the requisition without making it too obvious to the public. You're coming in from the private side to provide your credit for the public's use. Most of the public do not know the state has no commercial capacity to bring claims. Keep your superior knowledge to yourself. The public is not ready for full disclosure of this yet. And this, when it gets into discussion, the wide variety of information that you're getting out there is everybody telling you to challenge jurisdiction. Ch they, they, they keep on telling you challenge jurisdiction, challenge jurisdiction. That is the trap. That's the deception. And Gene Keating discussed that too. In his Gene Keating transcript, he was talking about Jack Smith, keep going into court, trying to argue with these people, talking about you don't have jurisdiction over me and things like that. That's not going to do anything. Abatement in common law. It talks about it. I forgot about that. I had that document, too. I had abatement at common law. Oh, I forgot about that. Let me add that, too. I had abatement at common law. Abatement at common law. I had that one, too. I forgot to add that one on there. I had that. Too. That was one of my foundational documents I read first. And that's on abatement at common law is talking about right to travel. And a lot of the right to travel documents that you see floating all over the Internet have borrowed excerpts out of that particular document. Abatement at common law. All right. So here's the list. Once again, creditors and their bonds dealing with presentments, Gene Keating transcript. Uh, Gene Keating Prison Treaties, Cracking the Code, 3rd Edition, 10th Chapter, Lawgiver.org, Morris Freedom from Legal Slavery, 
Clerk's Praxis, Nature of the Remedy 1099 OIT, The Matrix in the U.S. Constitution, Court Survival Guide, One Man Out, A Baby in a Common Law, American Jurisprudence, Black's Law Dictionary 8th Edition, United States Code Annotated, U.S. Supreme Court Digest Lawyers Edition, United States Code Services, and Official Code of Georgia Annotated. The only document on here that you probably are going to have a hard time finding is the U.S. Supreme Court uh, Digest Lawyers Edition. Everything else you, you should have pretty easy access to. You can Google any of these on the Internet for free. Just put the name of the document, put uh, .pdf after it, and it's going to pull up. All of these documents, this is what I read. Okay, all that this is this is the foundation of my education. So kill any notion out there that I just read Gene Keating's material. I thanked Gene Keating for directing me. Really, why Gene Keating was I was just really happy with Gene Keating because he is the one that told me to read Clerk's Praxis from reading the Gene Keating transcript. It was the Clerk's Praxis that opened my eyes. This document. Because it's private. They're private processes. That's something else that has been used as a tool to try to um, annihilate this information. Look what the courts are saying. Look at what the attorneys are saying. I mean, yeah, they're not going to publish it. I mean, you know, they're lying to you. Why would they, you know, we are saying they're lying to you. So why would they acknowledge it uh, on this side? It's just ridiculous. But anyway, the reason why is that um, when I did creditors and their bonds, um, I first started out, I didn't know anything. Uh, I was probably like many of you. I was thinking, you know, uh, I was around some people. I had two Moors who were, uh, who I were friends with, who were very good friends of mine. And they were just talking to me every day about it. The very first time I heard the information was in 1998. In 1998, someone had come to me, a good friend of mine, and said that, there's something about the fringes on the flag in the courtroom. That's the first time I ever heard anything about this information. Uh, back in the day, everybody was talking about the gold fringes on the flag. And this was back in 1998. I didn't, you know, think much of it or anything like that. It was just, I mean, what are you, what are you talking about? The gold fringes on the flag. What does that mean? And, um, didn't think much of it. Got to, got to a point where, um, uh, just to make a long story short, um, I started studying this information. The first document that I ever studied was creditors and their bonds. And the first thing that I learned was not to argue in court. Okay, it's called a traverse. When you traverse charges, I you are getting you are giving grounds for a jury trial or a bench trial. Okay, because you're arguing. You're arguing arguments are settled in. Uh, where you have to present facts, get stipulations. If, uh, if the facts have been stipulated by both sides of, uh, 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 in a case, then there's going to be, and that's going to go before a fact trier. And that is usually a jury trial or a bench trial in case there is no jury. And so that was one of the first things I learned was not to argue. And the very first document I ever, I ever read on this subject was creditors and their bonds it was not any of Gene Keating's, uh, information. A lot of people, I think they're out there saying, well, he got his information from Gene Keating or Tony King. Um, I never heard of Tony King until I'd been studying this information for, I didn't read any of Tony King's information until I'd been studying this information about five years. And the reason why is because um, when I first came to the knowledge of Tony King was, was I think around in 2010, he had a large following and, um, I was listening to a guy named David Clarence. This is when they were putting out the executor letter. You know, I've listened to all the gurus. I've listened to all of them. Um, Winston Stroud, David Clarence, just, you know, I give you a list. Jack Smith, a list of them. Creditors in commerce. Um, you know, I've, I've attended some of their calls and, you know, it's just everything. Just, you know, like many of you, I was uh, soaking up knowledge and just very hungry for learning more and more of the knowledge. You know, and by this time, I think David Clarence was doing his executor letters and you can still Google this. You know, he, he, he was calling out Tony King and so forth on, uh, his let, uh, you know, and, and I was kind of like, you know, I was kind of feeling David Clarence at this time. I'll say, yes, David Clarence guy. And he's talking about Tony King is a fraud. So for me, for a long time, I didn't listen to any of the things. Uh, I didn't even look at Tony King's information. Um, uh, one of my friends had actually attended Tony King's seminars. Um, 
you know, I, I'm sure y'all have heard of Jonah Bay. He also uh, attended a lot of those seminars and got information from Tony King. He affectionately refers to him as Jerry Curl Juice. Um, and I've never met the man. Never met Tony King in my life. Don't even know what he looks like. Um, later on, my friend passed me some uh, information from Tony King, and I started studying it about the DTC. And uh, I'm going to show you some things that made me kind of change my opinion about Tony King. Uh, I'm going to show you where I got, you know, the stuff from Gene Keating. And uh, uh, now this notion about Gene Keating, let me talk about Gene Keating real quick. I only had two documents from Gene Keating when I first started reading this. And this is what I give him all of his uh, uh, credit for. And there's a third document I read called Securitization 101. That was very, very good, too. But I got that later. When I first started studying this, there was only two jo documents I had from him. And one was the Gene Keating transcript. And the other one was Gene Keating prison treaties. And people will act like as if you just read that document and that's where you received all your information. That's not how I do things. How I do things is I read what the man says and I go back and verify it for myself. I go back and double check it. And while I will admit that Gene makes mistakes in a lot of his documents and things like that, because he's a little older now and, um, and things like that, the man is on point with a lot of the things that he says uh, when you go and do the research. The reason why a lot of people can put information out saying that this is all uh, fraudulent information or it is bullshit or something like that is because of how much study is required to be able to see the truth. It's not very easy. Just someone giving a cursory observation of some information and then passing judgment on it to me is irresponsible and slanderous and to me, uh, it's irresponsible in the sense that um, you're not having the highest duty of making sure that your people get all the information as possible. When I read Gene Keating's transcript, this is when I first heard about GSA bonds and about cl clerk's praxis. OK, the clerk's praxis. Those are and, and, and his prison treaties, because he tells you to read that. Those were two of the primary things that, you know, I. Uh, that I read, and I'm going to make an audio book off of these. If you, if you're paying attention on my website, I'm making audio books out of everything that I started off reading because I want people to understand me, you know, the foundation that I had where I learned everything. All right. So you don't have to go and ask anybody. I'm giving you the list right now. And let's just go through the list real quick. There's about 16 documents I had. Well, not, not 16. It was about, I'd say about 10 documents I had, and the rest were all law books. And those documents I had was creditors and their bonds, dealing with presentments, the Gene Keating transcript, the Gene Keating prison treaties, cracking the code third edition, just the 10th chapter. I did not have the entire book. The only thing I had was the 10th chapter, which is a very good chapter. It shows you how to put liens by using a common law copyright on your name. Okay, study that very intensely. I uh, has a very great section on there, how to si sign your name without liability. Very good. Re I think everybody should read that. Also had a document, as you can see on the uh, on my web YouTube page right now that I'm reading. It's called lawgiver.org, Moore's Freedom from Legal Slavery. Um, I had a copy of Clerk's Praxis. I had a copy of Nature of the Remedy, 1099 OIT. I had a copy of the document, The Matrix in the U.S. Constitution. I had a copy of the document Court Survival Guide, which I have used in court quite successfully. And uh, I had one called, uh, those were it. Those are the 10. Uh, 10, which I guess what they would like to label as Patriot documents or something like that. Or uh, And all of these documents don't deal with secure party. Court Survival Guide doesn't deal with secure party. The Matrix in the U.S. Constitution doesn't deal with secure party. Nature of the Remedy doesn't really deal with secure party. Clerk's Praxis certainly doesn't. Lawgiver dot more uh, does talk about it. Of course, cracking the code does. Um, dealing with presentments doesn't really talk about it. Neither does creditors and their bonds. Um, however, there is a presumption, I think, in creditors and the bonds that you've already did a secure party process. It basically tells you how to discharge mortgage and how to do an administrative process. But these are the documents I read. Very few of them talking about secure party. Oh, and there was one other document I had. I almost forgot. I almost forgot. 
Let me give you y'all this. It's called One Man Out. One Man Out is where I learned how to file a secure party process. That's where I learned. It was the only document that I had that gave illustrations of how to fill out a security agreement, um, you know, uh, how to, uh, you know, uh, contact everybody. I learned from there. Okay, so you don't have to ask anybody. I'm telling you right now in the video where I learned how to do a secure party process in the beginning was from a document called One Man Out. That's the document that I read. One man out. So you don't have to ask anybody, where did Yusuf L get his information from? I'm giving you a list of the documents on a video from where I got my information from. It's right there on the front of the screen. Now, um, after I'd been doing this about two years, I'd met a man and I had copied a lot of documents out of one man out. Um, and I think, what other document? It was basically one man out. And I think I did some stuff from Cracking the Code, Chapter 10. Okay, because those were only really the only two documents that I had that had examples of documents. And so I was copying a lot of stuff out of these particular documents. I got a lot of stuff to say in court from dealing with presentments, creditors and their bonds, and court survival guide. These are the three basic documents that I learned uh, what to say in court. When I met this man two years ago, uh, he, uh, after I'd been doing this for about two years, he's the one that got me to start going to the law library. And the first thing I started studying was American jurisprudence and United States Code annotated and a very good book that probably very few of you know about because it's not in a lot of law libraries is U.S. Supreme Court Digest Lawyers Edition, which matches up with the American jurisprudence. If you ever get a copy of it, you'll see that is titled basically the same way that American jurisprudence is. Um, I had a Black's Law 8th edition. I, I studied United States Code Services books, which are tur turquoise and blacks books in the, law library, in the law library. And I studied the official code of Georgia annotated. The official code of Georgia annotated um, was what I used to study and uh, verify everything from creditors and their bonds. I'd read creditors and their bonds, and I'd go into Title 17 and Title 18 in United States, uh, in official code of Georgia annotated. In Title 18 in Georgia, you have, uh, creditors and debtors, which is nothing but, um, which is nothing but admiralty. Okay. It's admiralty all day long. How do I know? Well, what I did was I'll give you the time, timeline. I read Gene Keating's, uh, Gene Keating's transcript. In there, he mentions clerk's praxis. From there, I studied clerk's praxis for six weeks. And looked up every word that was in it. All right. Looked up every word that was in it. it. Took me about six weeks to do. Looking up every single word. It was probably only about three or four words that were so ancient. And because all I had was a Black Saw 8th edition that I couldn't find the definitions to. But for the m most part, and this is where I learned about bonds. Okay. That cases have to be bonded. They call it a caution in Admiralty. And they talk about contempt of court, what they call uh, contumacy or a contumacious conduct and so forth. They didn't use, they don't use the same verbiage that we use today, which is why after studying this, I, the next thing I did was studied Admiralty and Maritime in American jurisprudence and matched the two up. Okay. This is how you're going to verify that this is the history of it written by John Hall. Okay. And then when you go in here, you can see how it's been updated also. And then you can go from there. You can read the official code of Georgia annotated title 18, and you can see that it's Admiralty Maritime creditors and debtors. That's the name of the title. All right. So that's how I started studying. I didn't get anything from Gene Keating. I mean, I just read, I mean, if anybody thinks that I just learned a plethora of information from reading two documents, they are silly. The reason that I like Gene so much is in reading these documents, for instance, in the Gene Keating prison treaties. Okay. I learned how to uh, read a, a B424 prospectus. And so when you go and you study, um, uh, uh, the uh what is it the uh the private prison industry okay correction corporations of america okay i went and got on the sec.org website and i'll show you that right now okay this is secinfo.com this is where you can look up um uh securities and things like this and you can just put in prison 
in here and do a search. And here you'll see uh, CCA Prison Realty Trust. Okay, Gene Keating is talking about it's a prison trust. When you go and read the Gene Keating pr uh, Prison Treaties, you'll see he got the symbol on his PNZ. The man did the research on it. I went behind him and looked at it. And you click on it, the CCA. I have an account with them, as you can see. Use avail. Okay. And I did the, the research behind it. I didn't just read Gene Keating's information and it just accept on its face what the man is saying. I went behind him and looked up the information myself. I said, well, let me um, go and see if what it, if this man, what he's saying is true, which is what these people don't do. Okay. They're just content on slandering people, um, making videos and trying to say, oh, let's expose this individual. And then they'll show a record of where they failed in court and so forth. I can show records of a lot of people failed in court. Hell, I failed a lot in court, a lot more times than I won. And, um, the thing about that is, is that's part of the learning process that a lot of people go through and attempting to learn all of this stuff. But if you're going to go into court and attempt to represent yourself, um, I give you, I give you props just off the top for trying to assert your rights because the flip side of that is I've been all over the country and to uh, consult an attorney. I haven't seen an attorney do one thing for anyone. I've looked at, I'm sure no less than 1000 discoveries from inmates and so forth. And almost all of them look exactly the same filed by attorneys from all over the place. They file. I can tell you right now what you're going to probably see. They'll file a motion to suppress, which you probably will not have a hearing on. They'll file a motion for bond. And that's usually it. That's usually it. There's no affidavits. There's nothing. And then you're going to sit in jail for about eight months. And then they're going to call offer you a deal uh, for you to plea out. And so they have a 98.6 percent conviction rate on the state and federal level because of this fact now obviously they're hiding something okay um you have people out there that are trying to stop what a lot of people are doing because they're trying to wake people up it's not so much um trying to teach you to get a remedy because remedy just means right what your rights are a remedy is a right okay so you have to know what your rights are they throw this word remedy around a lot but remedy is a right OK, so what are your rights? OK, what is the true nature of the jurisdiction that the court is operating under? OK, are these legislative tribunals a territorial courts under Article one, Section eight, Clause nine? And then there is Article three, Section two of the Constitution. OK, Art Article three, uh, Article three, Section one and two. OK, so we have separation of powers, I, which forms checks and balances on each of the branches of government. We have what is called delegation of powers. Uh, where each of the individual branches of government has what is called plenary power within their respective um, jurisdiction and so forth. And these are a lot of things for you to understand. There are seven principles that govern the Constitution. Um, you have to know all of these things, you know. And when you're finding uh, a lot of things that Gene Keating was talking about in his prison treaties, you can find right here on secinfo.com. You can pull up their 42, uh, B424 prospectus and find out it is a trust. And you can go to their website and they'll tell you it's a trust. It's a real estate investment trust is what it is. OK, it even gets into how much money they're making per prison. And there was a law passed that, uh, that the government agreed to keep the prisons 100 at 100 percent occupancy. All this, I went and verified myself. I didn't just read Gene Keating's material and just believe what he said. Um, and studying the clerk's praxis. Let me talk about that real quick. Okay. And here is a copy of uh, the clerk's praxis. It's available at SBC University website for free. Uh, in case anybody didn't know, um, I have a free membership at SBC University where I give away all this stuff for free. Doesn't cost anything. All right. You can get all the documents. You don't have to pay for anything. The course that we have on there is to teach you how to think about everything that they are telling you in these documents. You're not SPC University is not about just filling out forms. You know, uh, anybody can show you how to do that. Fill out a UCC 11, fill out a UCC one, fill out a UCC three, do a security agreement, uh, do a whole harmless agreement. Uh, there's a million places on the Internet where you can learn how to do that. As a matter of fact, when I first got into this, they were charging $10,000 to learn how to do it. I'm the first person came on the scene, started charging $150 to teach people. All right. 
And before I charged you $150 to teach you, I gave you the document and told you here, you can learn it on your own if you want to read it. But if you want to, if you want to attend one of my webinars and, sh and let me explain it to you, what you're reading, then that's your freedom of choice to do that. Now, right here in this uh, part one, the historical essay of the civil jurisdiction of Admiralty, this was a very, very interesting document. Um, I credit this document with giving me a lot of my knowledge about what I am teaching. Um, this is where, if I'm going to give anything credit, it's going to be this right here. And I give Gene Keating the credit because he's the one that alerted me to this. He's the one that told me about it. That's why I give him credit. That's why, you know, you thank the, per you thank the person naturally who is going to show you where to look. And one thing I liked about his teaching style is that he would not tell you things. He would just say, hey, you need to read this. And very few people would actually take the time to read it. Um, this document is broken up into three parts. It's broken up into uh, uh, the first part. It gives you a history. Uh, the second part gives you the statutes. And then the third part gives you the case law on supporting it. So it's three. The most interesting part of it to me was well, all three parts were very interesting. If you if you delve into it and get deep, which very few people do, um, and that's why people can slander and do things like that because they know most of you are not going to take the time to read something like this. You don't have the time to. So you say, oh well, this person he's teaching you X, Y, and Z and everything. The most um, corrupt parts of our judicial system is in foreclosure and in the criminal justice system. I can say that unequivocally. All right. And everybody knows it. I've been all over the country and everything talking to different people in the foreclosure. That's why I don't do foreclosures anymore, because your houses, everybody knows about the robo signing. Everybody in America should have got their home free and clear the robo signing. Go and get a law firm right now, since everybody talks about attorneys, and ask them will they help you with robo signers. They have a seal. They got a seal on that. You can't they won't talk to any of you about it. In 2010, they were doing the attorneys were helping everyone. The top tort foreclosure attorney in Georgia told me personally that um, we got the word to shut all this down. I spoke to him on the courthouse steps at Fulton County. That's where he told me face to face because we were having a discussion about seized. I asked him, I said, well, how can you do this mortgage? And in the verbiage of it says that I guarantee that this property is seized, which means I own it. Uh, right, and I'm buying it from you. And it says for a loan, you we we get it. He, and he told me, you say you're right. I've talked to a lot of attorneys, right? And I'm not an attorney, but I've talked to a lot of them. I've talked to attorneys uh, regarding Tony King's information. Okay, where back in the day in 2010, people were trying to use that number on the back of the Social Security card. I tried to use it and I actually went to an attorney's office and gave him some information. He asked me how I know this. Then he explained to me what I needed to do. And this is when you get into operation uh, circular number one. And there's a document on my website. that was a um, someone posted it. I don't know who posted it, but they talked about the DTC, how you have to form a trust, go to the DTC, and then you have to draw those funds down into your TDA account. And that is exactly what the attorney explained to me. And then that is what led me into reading Tony King's information. I finally picked up his information and started reading it. And one, one thing I understood is that all the people who slander Tony King ain't none of them reading none. Of it. Notice that the, all the people who slander these people, you won't see them read any of the documents. They're not reading any of the documents. I took the time to read through and I said, man, I, and so I, I'd never seen any of this from, uh, from, uh, Gene Keating. Gene Keating was at Tony King's seminar, but I don't think Gene Keating got, uh, Tony King got any of that from Gene. Uh, I don't, I don't see any evidence in anything that I've read from Tony King that he got anything from Gene Keating. But Gene Keating did an extensive amount of research on GSA bonds, the DTC, um, you know, bonds, all kinds of things. All right, that I went behind him and studied myself and didn't agree with everything that I read. Didn't agree with everything I read, but a lot of it I did agree with. But this is where you want to really start your research. They have something called Benedict on Admiralty, too, where you'll see the bonds and things like that. Um, you'll also see, like, um, in the official code of Georgia annotated, for instance, when I was reading uh, creditors and their bonds. 
Uh, what made me, you know, start to see things with that. And I'll show you that real quick. And right here, you can see this official code of Georgia annotated. And I used to, everybody who would be always in the uh, law library studying, you know, they catch a case, they'll be studying Title 16 and Title 17. I primarily. And I just happened to see, I'm saying, what is this de debtor and creditor? So I clicked on it and started reading it. And I started reading debtor and creditor relations. And you see right here, creation of a relationship of debtor and creditor. Whenever one person by contract or by law is liable and bound to pay to another an amount of money, certain or uncertain, the relation of debtor and creditor exists between them. And I started reading a lot of case law. Uh, for instance, like when you have child support, that's a debtor, debtor and creditor relationship. And things like that. And I started uh, seeing this uh, FIFA where when you um, uh, are convicted of a crime, it's executed by a FIFA. I learned that from Gene Keating. I learned that from Gene Keating. But I didn't just believe it, what he said. I found it. I went and what I did was you have to go to the law library. You can't read just these cases on the Internet. OK, if you're just reading it on the Internet, you got to go and pull the book off the shelf and see the citations of authority that are under each of the codes. And you have to read those ca case law under the code. And it's going to give you a wealth of information, a wealth of information. OK, and I've done videos on this. It's not that I haven't done videos on all this stuff. I've done videos on all this stuff. Um, I started getting into this also. And like, uh, what was that? It was, um, I think it was right here, attachment proceedings. I, and I had to go in here. And this is where I started finding out about the bonds, bond requirements generally. All right. And you'll see in here, they, they'll give you uh, right here, no writ of attachment, which is a warrant for an arrest, shall issue unless accompanied by a bond with good security, condition to pay the defendant all costs and damages that he may sustain in consequence of the issuance of the writ of attachment in the event that the amount claimed to be due was not due that no lawful ground for issuance of the attachment existed or that the property sought to be attached was not subject to attachment. The bond shall be in a sum equal to twice the amount claimed due in the plaintiff's application. The bond shall be presented to the clerk of the court where the application provided for in section 18-3-9 is sought to be filled for approval by such clerk prior to filing of the writ of attachment. So after reading this, now where, where did I get this from? Well, what I had read was a document called, how did I know to look at this? I read a document called Creditors and Their Bonds. And I'll show you that real quick. <laughs> and this is Creditors and Their Bonds. And if you Google this on the Internet, you see this. I'm the one who put this document up. I'm the one who did the graphics on it. People have passed it around. This is not the complete document, though. This is not the complete document. All right. But it starts off in a good section of it. Um, there's a whole section of there that, that is missing from this particular document. But this is um, the one that I put together because it was all I had at the time. I did this about in 2010 and it's hard. But right here, you'll see it does a lot about bonds for credit authorizations. Bond is always evidence of a debt. Straw man implied partnership. Very high level document, uh, you know, written very well. And I'd be interested to see an attorney read it and try to dispute some of the things that are being said in it. OK. Like, for instance, um, how I learned about the bond. It's a case into this case bond section. And you'll see right here. And I'll read it to you. It said this bond is in the nature of a replevin bond. A replevin bond was formerly used in common law equity when there was a dispute and one party chose to file a claim in court against another party in possession of property in dispute. The moving party was required to bond his charge or claim before he could get temporary possession of the subject property. The replevin bond was double the value of the subject property. Part of it was to indemnify the sheriff who seized the subject property from the defendant in possession. The order part was to guarantee the defendant would be uh, reimbursed, at least for the value of the seized property, if it were not returned to him in the event he won the case. Now, I read all that there. So what I did was I went over to this and I seen that this has to be double the amount. OK, so we can see that this is a bond bond requirements generally. So we can see this is in the nature of a replevin bond. I had to bond a case. And then I got down here and I started seeing uh, what I see. Uh, form of attachment. And they give you a copy of the bond in here what the bond has to look like, which almost looks identical to the one in creditors and their bond. Here's the bond. OK, see right here to said principles and seeking attachment against said defendant, which is now about to be sued out in such and such county. 
Now, if the said plaintiff uh, shall pay all damages that the defendant may sustain and also all costs that may be incurred by him in consequence of suing out such attachment, in the event that the said plaintiff shall fail to recover in said case, then the bond shall be void. So here we see this is the bond that the uh, basically the attorney is required to put in or the state is required to put in before they seize property in any type of attachment proceeding. And you have to know what a writ of attachment is. In the second sense of the word in Black's Law Dictionary, you'll see that it is a warrant for an arrest. And you have to know the nature of the action in order to determine how each sense of the word applies, which is commercial. And I, they can argue about that all day long. This is all commercial. Article 1, Section 8, Clause 3, under the Constitution for the United States of America, they have, I got case law, the Supreme Court has said it a million damn times. Anybody who wants to argue with it, they are either an agent or a goddamn fool. Okay? I've read this up and down over and over. And they say, well, you're not an attorney. You're not, you'll have to be an attorney to learn this information. Most of the people, the founding fathers, were not attorneys. I've done the research on that. They don't learn law. They learn procedure. I've done an extent in my 15 years, I've done extensive amounts of research on all of this information. Okay. And you see, like, let me get into clerk's practice. When you go into the clerk's practice, it's going to tell you that each side has to put in a bond to what they call a caution. Okay. They have to put it into the same thing, but they're using different words. Don't let these people fool you. Don't let them think that somebody's trying to trick you or something like that. They're playing word games. Okay. They're playing word games with all of you. And they, they, they have to tell you the truth, but they've changed words around. You have to dig deep to find it. Or you don't have to listen to any of the things that any of us are saying. Go get you an attorney. See what happens. See what happens in a foreclosure when you get an attorney. I fought for two years for a client, had a best friend who was an attorney, good friend of mine. He wasn't a best friend, but he was a good friend. Turned the case over to him. They lost, lost the house within two weeks. And it's somebody I know. Given attorneys many, many opportunities to do things, and they've all done it, and you all know it. Anybody who's had experience in this, you all know it. Why would anyone... Look for an attorney to question some of the things that are being taught when all they can do is they're licensed. OK, and that license means that they are only can operate within a certain jurisdiction, which is commercial. And I've never seen a license. I've asked them. I've asked chief just judges to show me they get permission from the Supreme Court. I got an attorney, this attorney right here. His name is Stephen Wozni. And here is the letter from uh, Stephen Wozniak. I would suggest everybody read this. There is a lot of stuff going on in Greece behind this man. This is an attorney who utilized, um, he took out a Cracking the Code third edition where you do a common law copyright on your name. And he has a trillion dollar lien against the Bar Association uh, in Washington State. He sold parts of that lien and assigned parts of it uh, to different individuals. And um, and uh, one of the individuals is a businessman in Greece who got it, who was trying to clear the national debt. Mo Mo most of you don't know any of this, but I'm giving it to you. I, I was doing a video on all of this right now. You got to do research on that because they slandered this man. He's crazy. He's a fraud. They, they will call you a fraud and crazy in a minute, but I don't see them doing anything to take this lien off. And it went to the Supreme Court in Greece and they say, we don't see any evidence that this money don't exist. Do your research. I got a video coming up on this. Okay, and this guy named Artemis Soros. I, his name is Artemis Soros. You're going to see him all over the internet. What's happening over in Greece, and this is a very good video. You'll see that the people over there are supporting him. He was assigned a portion of this lien against these attorneys in Washington State. I for like 600, the lien was, I think it was originally like a billion dollars. The interest went on up to a tree and, and he broke all parts of it. This was back like in 2003, 2004. And he sold parts of this lien. They uh, could not arrest this man for this. This is a businessman who got it and he was trying to get rid of the national debt in Greece. Y'all need to go and research this man and see what's going on over in Greece right now. Start really studying how their economy, um, how this man is trying to get rid of the central bank over there. And you have to understand also that these Jews I, who run all these central banks, okay, the first thing, I've, I've read all documents going back history, like there's another document called uh, My Irrelevant Defense. I'll show you that real quick. Um, 
This was my irrelevant defense right here. Jewish ritual murder by Arnold Lease. I read this document where he was arrested. He did the research on the Jews to see why they've been kicked out of all these countries. And it was because they were doing Jewish ritual murder. And when you read, um, when you listen to uh, Rabbi Finkelstein, he said, well, you know, we take the children and kill them and cut them up and put them in McDonald's. You probably heard that. We talks about that in here. And this is back in, and and uh, and I got it from Rabbi Finkelstein. He's the one who told me about the book. I had to go and say somebody wrote a book in the 1930s and try to tell you all of this. I found the book. This is the book. I by Arnold Lees and he got arrested because he put he put out the truth. That's why it's called my relevant defense. It didn't work for him. Same thing happened is happening. This guy, uh, Aramis uh, over there in Greece right now. So you got to look through the lies. You cannot trust nothing. These people say you can't trust no attorney. If my mama became an attorney, I wouldn't trust her. I'll be quite honest with you. So using an attorney as some sort of basis for whether or not uh, something can be substantiated to me is ridiculous. Especially in my experience. Okay. Do the reading. I'm reading these documents. I'm putting up these audio books for you. I want you to read. I'm trying to get you to read again. Y'all not reading. I know we live in a uh, era where people don't read as much. They like to listen. So I'm, I'm making the audio books and I, I'm taking a great deal of time to do that. I'm not charging anything, anybody for anything for that. It takes a lot of time to do all this stuff. But you have people out there, they're going to try to slander you for no reason. You haven't done anything to them. Nothing. But they don't like you for some reason. That's why I call them bitches. All right. Or they hide behind other individuals who present information. Then in the background, they get somebody to be a front for them or things like that. This is what is going on. I've been doing this a long time. I've dealt with a lot of trolls over the years. I mean, undercover agents, uh, fed, federalities, everything. I've had people tell me the truth. I remember one time I was standing in front of a courthouse talking to an attorney. And I said, you know, this is all civil. He said, you're right. And walked away. So. Right here, let me go back real quick. We was at the, uh, what was that? We were at the uh, secinfo.com. You can see right here, this is Cor uh, Correction Corporations of America. You know, you can get the prospectuses and they're old. Right here, the registration statements and things of that nature. And you can go in here and you can look at all their paperwork. And they'll tell you, okay? They say these are all old right here. Old, old, old. Let me see, they got a new one. These all look old, but back in the day, here's the 42B1 perspectives. When you click on it, you can read it. And I did a study on this. I read this entire thing. Uh, CCA Prison Realty Trust, a Maryland real estate investment trust. The company was formed on April 23rd, 1997 to capitalize on the opportunities created by the growing trends toward privatization in the corrections industry. And when you, this is a trust document. It's an indenture agreement. Okay. When you read all this paperwork, they'll tell you how much you're getting the, uh, uh, par value of the prisoners, the prorated that, uh, uh, amount that they're getting for each of the prisoners and things of that nature. And when you go and read Gene Keating's prison treaties, he did the research on it. So I'm not understanding well, what did Gene Keating do? Why is it that people are saying, well, you got all your information from Gene Keating? Well, I got my information where to look from Gene Keating. I went and did my own research. And I'm telling you right now, you need to read all of these. If you don't read it, then all you're going to be is susceptible to people telling you, well, that's not accurate information. And then try attempt to use a court case where somebody didn't win, which isn't evidence of anything. A lot of people who were doing this uh, foreclosures got out a long time ago because they saw nobody was going to win in foreclosure. They wouldn't let nobody win. The last draw for me, uh, the last straw for me is in the robo signing. I mean, the evidence is undeniable. The fraud that went on with that. This Google robo signing. I, I did a video with an attorney where he explains it. Here's an attorney explaining it to you right now. Now, here's a video. I, this came out like in 2010 when we were fighting foreclosures back when a lot of attorneys were helping individuals. They were attempting to help you. You go to law firm, they try to help you. And you can see right in here, this attorney, you ought to watch this video. This lady's on here. She got kicked out of her house. All right. And you can see right here, this guy right here, he's an attorney. And he's going to tell you straight up. 
We don't know who owns these houses. They don't know. Watch this video. But see, a lot of y'all are new. You don't know all of this stuff. So these people can come and say, ah, oh, this doesn't work. And it, listen to this. This is an attorney right here. This was right before they got the word to stop helping everybody. I was working with law firms and everything. They were doing civil action lawsuits. We had a business and we had, we went and got a law firm. He said, okay, we need to get these people attorneys. So what we were doing is we were uh, just channeling everybody to that. And that wasn't nothing but a trap. Let me tell you something. Do your own research. Don't listen to these damn people. When, when they start slandering somebody, that's the damn very person you need to start looking at. Okay. And make the determination for yourself because these people act like y'all are not intelligent and you're not grown and you can't read something and have comprehension of it yourself. You can't look up a, a word and find out what something means for yourself. They try to posture as if they are the only authority that has the understanding. I've read, uh, uh, I got uh, uh, law reviews from professors and all kinds of stuff. They questioning the same things we're questioning. Same things. But y'all won't know that because of the way that it's written. This all comes down to the fact that they are creating a new world order. And it's gonna, all going to be under commerce. And everybody's going to be their slave. And if anybody tries to tell you anything different, I'm doing something right now on the Dred Scott case. I'm about 50% done with it, the audio. It's on commerce. Dred Scott was looked at as commercial property. And I'm doing the audios now because I'm through talking about it. I'm going to show you how I study what I looked at. I'm going to take you step by step and show you all the things that I found. So if you think you're coming to SBC University to fill out some fucking paperwork, all right, and somebody tells you that, they did they just never been on SBC University. All they're gonna do is say, oh, he's charging money for information. No, we're not charging money for, uh, for information. It's a university, just like the name says. We're over there learning about different things. I do webinars. You're a member. You get, you get to attend webinars. I just did four webinars right now. I'm, I'm going to do one probably tonight, tomorrow. Okay. When we talk about processes, we also, I spent three hours. I did just to give an example. I talked about a, uh, 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 a certificate of non response. I took about two hours talking about it. I'm not going to just take you and just show you how to fill out a document. We're going to go through the UCC. We're going to study what is a holder in due course. UCC 3-302. What is a, recoup, a claim in recoupment in UCC 3-305? What is a claim to an instrument? UCC 3-306. What do these words mean? What is knowledge of something? Okay, UCC uh, 1-202. What do all these words mean? What are these codes are talking about? UCC is a codification of the law merchant that's been around for at least 6,000 years. It's admiralty. Howard Freeman helped me understand how they changed the names of it. If you just study your state statutes on writ of attachment, just go writ of attachment. Look at all 50 states and look how they jump and it's located all over the place in all 50 states. Georgia just happens to be the most transparent state, I think, in the union and showing you what's going on through their codes. I just wanted to make a video real quick and talk about this. Once again, here's the list of everything that I study with. You don't have to ask nobody what, where somebody got, where I got my information from. Here's the list. Okay. You don't have to do that. All right. This is United States Supreme Court, the lawyer's digest. I put a lot of information out of this on negotiable instruments. And the United States Code Services, obviously, annotated. Uh, I'm sorry, the United States Code Annotated. I didn't use USC, I used the United States Code Annotated and the official code of Georgia Annotated. Okay, this is the list I got, I studied when I started. This is everything I had when I started. So if anyone asks you, where did he get his information from? You direct him to this video and you show him this list. Peace to the God.